How's everybody doing this morning? Turn me in your Bibles uh, to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Verse 13, it says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh uh, by him. Father God, thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I pray for those hearts that are listening right now, Father God, that this word be sown on good ground so to be able to bring fruit for you, Father God. I thank the Lord for this earthen vessel that you're using, Father God, that it be used to give you glory. I am nothing without you, Father God, but I pray right now this word will be something to them, Father God, they be able to save their souls. I thank the Lord for revelation right now, Father God, to be able to bless everyone here. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. See, I love God's word. It's so rich. Package within God's word has a lot of meaning. For sometimes when you read God's word, if you read it on the surface level, you might not get the understanding that you're searching after. But when you get in God's word and you look at it, it's deeper revelation, then you'll be able to understand what God is trying to say to you. The Bible says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. When the Bible always talks about the kingdom of heaven, it talks about the establishing of God's government on this planet. And he says it's likened unto ten virgins, meaning that uh, these people that the word has been presented to them. When Jesus came, he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And from that moment when he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is hand, the kingdom of God was presented on the earth. The word ten represents a conjunction. That's why when the Bible says different words, there's a deeper meaning to it. The word ten in this revelation means a conjunction. That means two properties working at the same time. And when you go on, it says, which took their lamps. Their lamps represents their soul. It represents what they have on the inside. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. The Bible says that five of them were wise and five were foolish. I'm going to put the mic up here, I'm sorry. Get some more. When the Bible talks about the number five, the five represents a separation. That's why when the Bible says ten, half of ten is five. So when five represents a separation, that's why he said there was one, there was some five, the five foolish, and the five wise, because there was a separation of the what the gospel was presented. And if you continue to read, it says, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Oh, verse 3, I'm sorry. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They took their selves. That means they received God in their mindset. They received God in their soulless realm. But they did not allow it to present it inside of their hearts to produce actions. Now when it says, But the wise took oil in their vessels. The word vessels represents the body. Oil represents the source of light. That means this oil represents the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom, the bridegroom represents Jesus, tarried or delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, midnight represents the darkest hour for the church. At midnight, or the pinnacle of evil, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. What this represents is the saying that it's a sign of his coming. If you look at our world today, there's evidence of a sign of his coming. Amen. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Trimmed me that they prepared themselves. But the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. 
that's a foolish representation because many people believe that they are saved due to fear. People believe that they were saved through a prayer but forgot that salvation is a process. It says, but the wise answer saying, not so, lest there not be enough for us. How many of us are being drained by people who's trying to take what we have? That's getting us all set, all focused from what we ought to do for the kingdom of God. But the wise answer, oh, I already said that verse. And uh, verse 10, it says, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Jesus came, and they that were ready went in and be with him, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins. Many people don't say on that day, Lord, Lord, what about us? But he says, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Well, I'm going to skip over. I'm going to get right into it. There's five points I'm going to make today. The first point, uh, if you're taking notes, is the kingdom. Since the beginning of time, God spoke within earth. He said, before he even created man, he said, let us make man in our image. God spoke within of himself, let us make man within our own image, to three parts beings. God the creator, God the savior, which was Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. If you look at yourself, he said, let us make man in our image. You also are three parts. You have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. God already knew that before the earth was even formed, that man was going to be able to choose against him. That's why people say, you know, why is there evil in the world? The question is, why is there, why, what's the question about it? Because evil proves that there is God. I learned from a pastor, he said, um, if you believe that there's, some, if there's a such thing as evil, then you have to believe there's a such thing as good. If you believe that there is evil and good, you have to believe that there's a moral law or a, a premises that judges whether or not what is good and what is evil. And from that, you have to, if there's a moral law, then there has to be a moral law giver. There has to be someone to give that law. So evil in and of itself proves that there is a God. I'm going to get some water. I'm sorry. So evil proves God. So in the beginning of time, he stepped out. He said, you know what? I know that there is going to be a situation where man is going to choose evil over me. So the greatest gift that we, each of us all have is free will. So with that free will, we get to choose whether or not to obey or to disobey. And so God already knew. He said, you know, the only way I can see whether or not man truly loves me is if I allow evil to be present. Because they have to choose from their free will whether to endeavor to, be, to do evil or to do good. So God already knew when he said, let us make man. He already had the redemptive plan for mankind already laid out. For he said that the, uh, when the woman bring the seed, she's going to crush his head while Satan crushes his heel. So from that point, he already prophesied that his was going to come to redeem man back to him. So as time went on, man's heart began to grow evil. And when Jesus came onto the scene, the gospel, which is saying that all of us within our situation now are sinners. We have done something against God. Now that God has said, I have to bring someone in my place, and he has stepped from time, from eternity into time, to save us. So the moment that the kingdom was represented was when Jesus came into the earth. When Jesus said, now I have come, and he says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now the kingdom brings a distinction. That's why the Bible says there was five wise and five foolish. The distinction comes in now that those who are either listening to the gospel or those who are not. So the question is, are you a wise or are you a foolish? Let's get back to God's word. Let's pray for a minute because there's something going on. Let's pray. Amen. Satan, we address you right now. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We thank you right now for the sensitivity to the spirit, Father God. We rebuke any demonic forces right now that's coming against this message right now, Father God. It's hindering my concentration. Thank you, Father God, for who you are in my life. I think about I'm just a vessel being used by you. Say you have no authority over this message. You have no authority over this man of God. Right now, the spirit of God will speak through this man of God with clarity. You have no authority right now in Jesus' name. Father God, we love you, but we're going to have church today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let's start on. Turn me in your Bibles to Matthew 25, 1 through 13. We're going to start over. We're going to do it right this time. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. 
While the bridegroom tarried, <clears throat> they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. <clears throat> and while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in to be with him into the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. The key verse, Watch therefore, for ye know not, neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. All right, let's do this, okay? All right. The kingdom of God was represented in this. Before God created heaven and earth, he already knew within his mind the redemptive plan for mankind. He spoke within himself. He said, let us make man in our image. He didn't speak to his left or to his right. He spoke within of himself three parts. Now, within yourself, you also have three parts. You have a body, you have a soul, and your spirit. Within that image, God created the source of life. That's why he himself had to come and say, let us make man. Because he already foreknew within the, in the plan that Satan or the creation of evil was going to give man an opportunity to sin against God. Amen. Now, like I said before, evil proves the existence of God. Yes. If you say there's evil, you also have to say there's good. <clears throat> if you believe that there's evil and good, then you have to say there is a moral law that determines whether or not what is good and what's evil. And if you know what the moral law is, if, you also have to understand there has to be a moral law given, which is God. So evil proves God. That's why God allows Satan to exist. That's why God allowed the tree to be planted in the midst of the garden, to give us an opportunity from our hearts to be compelled to go after him. That's why evil was presented. And with that evil, he knew that the greatest love story that can ever be told is if that I sacrifice myself for those that I love. Even though I foreknew that man was going to come against me, even though I foreknew that man was going to sin against me, yeah. the only greatest sacrifice is that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's why as man began to grow old, he already foreknew the redemptive plan for mankind. With that redemptive plan, he already knew that if I step from eternity into time, I have spoken from eternity through time my salvation message. When Jesus came onto the scene, the, the greatest transition of humanity was when Jesus Christ came onto earth. There's a lot of people that try to disprove Jesus Christ but don't do their research because Jesus Christ was the pinnacle of which that transformed or transitioned all of history. Now, when Jesus came on the scene, the Satan knew that the gospel message has been presented. The gospel message is this, that we all were sinners, that we all was in a deprived state. Our hearts are in a poor condition. We all have done evil against God from our hearts. I have to come with a message that will redeem man back to me. Now, the greatest deception that Satan knows is that he knows that the kingdom has been presented. So what do I have to do? I have to tailor my message or tailor my deception camouflage within the message that's able to save the souls. So once the kingdom was established, Satan has, Satan's agenda had to change, which means now I have to distract or alter the salvation message within itself. The distinction is with there's five wise and five foolish. That's why he says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins. The number ten represents a conjunction. That means it's a joining of two temporary things acting at the same time. That means you have evil and good operating at the same time. The number five makes a distinction. It divides. That's why there's five wise and five foolish, because within that ten, where the gospel has been presented, there is five wise and five foolish. Now, the Bible says, let's go back to the scripture. The Bible says that the five foolish took their lamps, which means that they understood the gospel message within their intellect only. They only understood God's message based upon I've heard. The Bible says there's a difference between those that hear and those that hear and do. If you're a hero only, you only operate because you've heard. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that the place is on fire, you heard it. Mm -hmm. But the people that understood it would be the ones that left. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Amen. So when you're a hero, the foolish says, let's go to the scripture, it says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. Mm -hmm. That means they received the gospel, they received the message of Jesus Christ in their intellect only. When the gospel message was presented saying that your soul was evil or your soul has sinned against God, now... That person's soul, or they received the only that part of the message, but didn't allow the message to change their lives. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are living foolish today because they only received the message by saying, oh, I said a prayer five years ago, so I have my fire insurance. Yeah, no or or I, I did this 20 years ago, so I'm all right. Yeah. But we have to understand that salvation is much more than a prayer. It's a process. Mm -hmm. 
It's a process in which you have to walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. That's why they took no oil, which means the oil represents the Holy Spirit, which is the source of life. That means that's a difference. Like this, um, I'm going to get back to that later. But the Bible says that the wise, the wise are those, but the wise took oil in their vessels. Vessels represents us, our bodies. Our body gives us world conscious. That means through my senses, I can touch. Let's say if I go to one of my sisters. These are my two sisters back here, but ain't they beautiful? <laughs> my body is touching her now, but my soul is hugging her. That's a difference. Yeah. Because through my senses, the, my body gives me world conscious. That means I taste, I smell, I feel. I, all of my senses I do through my body. But it's my soul that gives my touch meaning. It's from our soul that gives our touch meaning. The soul represents our mind and our will. Your mind is separated into six compartments. Your mind, is, your mind has thoughts, it has memories, it has ideas, it has perceptions, it has a knowledge system, and it has emotions. Your mind has six components in it. That's why the Bible says you have to renew your mind. You just don't renew one aspect of it. You have to renew all six categories of it. Each of those six components within your mind uh, intertwines with each other. If I have a negative memory, it triggers negative thoughts. If I have negative thoughts, it triggers negative emotions. If it triggers negative emotions, it gives me a negative perception about people. If I have negative perception about people, it gives me a negative idea about a person. And if it gives me a negative idea, then it serves as a memory in my mind, or it gives me knowledge about that individual. So your soul represents a lot to offer. It has a lot to offer. What the Satan is knowing, he said, if I can get to the soul of a man, because your soul represents the core of your being. Your soul is in between your spirit, those that have it, whose spirits are enlightened, and your body. And that's why the Bible says you got to kill the deeds of the flesh. Because through your senses, Satan knows that there's different urges or different things that the body gravitates to. I'm a man. I naturally want to be successful. I naturally want the affections of a woman. But the thing is, when that boundary crosses certain boundary, now I'm leaning over to my flesh. That's why my soul is realm, even though I might touch a woman, it's touching her, but through my soul is realm, I'm either loving her or lusting after her. It's your soul is realm. That's why the Bible says, he's not, not the Bible says, but God is not going to judge you by the results of your actions. He's not going to judge you how often you pay your tithes. He's not going to judge you how often you do all the works for him. He's going to judge you by the content of your heart. What's inside of your soul is realm. That's why he says, the distinction is between when the gospel is presented, the reason why people have been deceived because they came under a partial gospel. See, we have to understand what this is salvation. You cannot go into salvation off emotion alone. That's why a lot of people, there's a lot of deception that goes on at the altar call. They play music. They do different things to draw you to the altar. And then when you come to the altar off your emotions, you never really change. Because once your emotions die down, then all of a sudden you still go back to your sinful ways. When Jesus comes to your life, there's a change. There's, there's no there's no evidence of your past. The Bible says they that are in Christ are a new creature. How can you be new practicing old things? That's what we have to understand that salvation has to come through your reasoning. It has to come from your understanding of the gospel. If I came to you with a partial gospel that says Jesus loves you and he wants to forgive you of your sins, will you say this prayer after me? That's a partial gospel. That's only one aspect of it. What about the aspect that says repent? <coughs> Turn change. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then the Bible says, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them of their sin. You cannot be forgiven unless there's humility. That's why evil does such a great job in humbling people. Uh, like say, 2009, 2008 was a great humbling year for me. Two years. Through those two years, I went through a lot of trials that humbled me. I had to be humble because it's only through humility that you can that you can understand the gospel message. That's why a lot of people say, why is there earthquakes? Why is there hurricanes? Why is there people dying? Why bad things happen to good people? The thing is, it takes it might take a dead person to wake somebody up. It may take a hurricane to wake you up. It may take an earthquake to wake you up because you know why? I'd rather suffer in this life and go to heaven than to live this life with luxury.